Good morning. Today's scripture is one of my favorites. I know I say that a lot. <laughs> I guess I have a lot of favorites, but this really is. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. This is the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. John 11, uh, 1 through 45. So you know the drill. Pause the video, read the scripture, then come on back with me. This week's story is the death of Lazarus. Um, it is a remarkable and meaningful story, and it contains one of the most famous verses in the Bible, and it's famous uh, for a couple of reasons, because it's the shortest verse in the Bible, um, but also because there is so much going on. And that verse, of course, is Jesus wept. The question before us today is, what made Jesus cry? Let me ask you a question. When you cry, what leads you to that point? It's usually not just one thing, right? It's usually a bunch of things that all hit at just the wrong time, and no matter how tough we try and be, it just happens. Back a couple years ago, my dad died, and um, every now and then, still, a couple years later, it, it just hits me a, a George Strait song comes on the radio, or I have something that I think I want to tell him, it just hits, and I cry. It isn't just one thing, it's, it's a bunch of things that hit at just the, the wrong or the right time, depending on your perspective. What made Jesus weep? Well, it wasn't one thing, it was a bunch of things. Lazarus was his friend. Um, he frequently spends time with Lazarus and with his sisters, Mary and Martha. He had time to get there before Lazarus died, but Jesus didn't go. The religious authorities were on Jesus' back, calling him an imposter. Um, maybe part of him wanted to show them what he could do, that he could raise the dead. You add to that that Jesus' own death is just around the corner. It's coming soon, and he knows that. And so you have all of these things piled on top of one another, and they hit like a ton of bricks when Mary runs to Jesus when he finally gets there and says, If you had come, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And Jesus wept. Jesus wept because it was the truth, and the truth hurts sometimes. His friend, Lazarus, died, and Jesus could have prevented it. He didn't. He didn't even go there to comfort him or to support Mary and Martha. He stayed away for two days on purpose. Why would Jesus do such a thing? Well, it wasn't just one reason. It was a bunch of reasons. Um, he needed to prove the Pharisees wrong. He needed to prove God right. He needed to show what he could do. He needed a miracle so that we would still be talking today about what happened on that day 2,000 years ago. And as much as every bone in his human body surely wanted him to go and help his friends, he couldn't. He couldn't do it. My dad loved westerns, and um, I guess that's kind of rubbed off on me over the years. The great western writer, Louis L'Amour, once wrote, there will come a time when you think everything is finished. That will be the beginning. Mary, Martha, and Jesus surely felt like everything was finished. Lazarus was dead. The man who could heal the sick never came. Maybe the friendship hadn't been as close as they thought. Maybe he wasn't who they thought he was. Maybe he wasn't who he thought he was. Who would they serve now? 
how would they spend their lives? Had the past couple of years all just been a waste of time? They thought everything was finished. Jesus said to them, I'm the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And he looks at Martha and says, Do you believe this, Martha? She says, Yes, Lord. I believe that you're the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who's coming into the world. That's when Jesus walks to the tomb of his friend, Lazarus. Mary and Martha are right there by his side. They placed a stone over the tomb. This is what they did. They placed stones over tomb to preserve the dignity of the dead. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha tells him, it, it's going to smell. He's been dead in there for four days. Which is only a, a reminder that Jesus stayed away on purpose for several days. Jesus said, but you said you believed that I'm the resurrection and the life, didn't you? Yes, Lord, she replies. I know you do, Martha, he says to her, but I need everyone watching to believe just as you do. And it's at that point, four days later, when Jesus yells, Lazarus, come out of there. And Lazarus walks out of his own grave. Four days after his death, the dead rise, the blind see, the doubters believe. They thought everything was finished, but it was only the beginning. What made Jesus cry? A whole bunch of things. A whole bunch of things. But none of them were powerful enough to keep him away for good from his dear friends. None of them were powerful enough to stand in the way of his mission. The tears were but the beginning. Remember that, my friends. The tears were out of a deep, deep love. And that was only the beginning for Lazarus and for us. Remember that as we go to Holy Week and as we go to Easter. There will come a time when you think everything is finished. It's only the beginning. Amen.